Hey guys, um, so it's been a little bit, uh, took a little bit of a break here because it's been super crazy the last couple of weeks, so apologize for the delay in getting getting this video back up. Uh, got a record, latest release is volume three records, CDs were out, been shipping a bunch out to everybody and uh, that ordered it from us and all the stores and vendors and we've got another record in production and I've been uh, lipstick uh, CDs are done and shipping now. Uh, should have those pretty soon, and the the uh, hopefully some test pressings here as well, pretty quick. Um, and hammering through on the final edits for the Metal Church book, and trying to get that up and going with our designer, and get a pre-order going for that hopefully later this month. So so a lot going on. Um, so. We did a special Queensryche one, so obviously they had a, quite a lot of releases, and we did a book on them. I was able to go hang out with my Northwest Metalworks label partner, Brian Naren, and do a fun one in his place and him show off some of his collection and stuff. So, um, so I'm going to continue with a, just a couple more bands. There's not a lot for Q. Of course, um, Q5 was probably the other band that's the more known. Um, they... Um, that's the that's a CD reissue of the Music for Nations, which was the second was the European edition had a different cover. Uh, that's the original Albatross version that came out in '84. The guys in kind of the Road Warrior sort of gear. Uh, we got Evan Sheely, Rick Pierce, and Gary Thompson from TKO. Um, Scott Palmerton is the guy in the middle um, who was in Sorcerer's Apprentice and Blue Sky and mercenary um and great great singer very much kind of a bon scott style vocals that he has um and then floyd rose over here is the guy guitarist who invented the walking tremolo system that eddie van halen and george lynch and a whole bunch of other people used over the years and still do um and then it got uh a reissue or picked up for for release in 85 on music for nations this is actually a reissue that came out a while back of blue vinyl one that has like a bonus cd of demos and stuff it's a pretty nice version but that's basically the same cover and um there's a steal the light 12 inch it's pretty cool three song 12 inch where it's got a live uh unreleased track it's not on the record but that's all right in there because it was in 84 a Kazok radio show. That's where we took a track for our volume two compilation that they were kind enough to let us use. Um, their second album was When the Mirror Cracks. Here's a CD reissue. It also has a couple bonus tracks. Um, High Voltage did this, I think, late 90s, somewhere in that range. Um, they had a recent, they reformed a few years ago for doing shows and stuff. Um, they had split up originally in the late. 80s and um, Scott and Rick form Nightshade. Uh, Jeff McCormick was in the band for a while that we talked about a little bit earlier from TKO and a bunch of different bands. And um, they reformed, they did this new release uh, 2016, I think, on Frontiers, I believe. Played some local shows. They played our uh, Northwest Metal Fest, the first one we did in 2018. We brought that back. Um, they had a third record that got shelved. Um, it was never released, but I do have the demos on this. <laughs> um, and uh, some of it ended up on the first Nightshade album, which I have somewhere around here and I couldn't find it. So, But well, they actually had three Nightshade records. All are really good, so I'd recommend picking those up. Um, the only other band I could think of for Q is um, I don't have a tape or anything. They did a tape or a CD. I can't remember. Um, and that's Quigsy Stick. Um, they're not metal, but they were kind of a fun, um, kind of funk, hard rock crossover thing. Some different stuff in there. Um, and then, uh, so next we kind of want to shift to R. Of course, Rail being a pretty well-known Northwest band. Um, these guys started like in 1970 in junior high. Uh, the core three guys, um, Rick Knotts joined a couple years later when they needed uh, a guitarist, and um, they kind of built up playing a lot of covers and stuff, and their and some of their own material throughout the 70s got really popular. 
Um, eventually, they did this record with Michael Fisher, Roger Fisher, uh, ex-guitarist of Heart, his brother. Um, the Fisher brothers had a studio. I recorded this and released this in uh, late 80, early 81. I think it came out early 81. Um, and it eventually got picked up uh, for a reissue a couple of years later when they won the video on a uh, contest on MTV. They um, Basement Tapes, I think it was called. They sent... Um, video for um, the lead off song um, on um, Arrival Hello, which is kind of a Rush meets Van Halen sort of um, song. Um, uh, it started out kind of more in the hard rock stuff. Um, their first seven inch was released uh, in the studio label for C West Studios where they recorded it. Um, was um, Rockin' You, much more up-tempo kind of hard rocker, kind of in the Ted Nugent, Pat Travers uh, sort of realm of that day, of that kind of hard rock. Um, uh, the B-side, interestingly enough, is written by um, uh, uh, Steve Adamack from Bighorn and the Allies, um, worked in the studio. There, so, um, And then, uh, so they had a couple records. Uh, they had when they won the MTV contest, they got an EMI contract. They did a four song EP, had a couple videos that got some MTV play and stuff at the time. Um, uh, and uh, uh, they then eventually did their own. Uh, we're back kind of doing it themselves and put out this record rail three uh, in, I think, 85, 86 range. Uh, Kind of went through some different stuff. Uh, there's a reissue that they did on CD combining the, the MIEP and Rail 3, which was kind of fun. Um, and then they kind of went through, Rick left the band to go to school um, around the time that the Rail 3 came out. Um, Joe Chicaney from uh, Kidskin and Bighorn um, ended up, uh, filling in for him for a while. Ronnie Montrose filled in for him. They actually did a tour with Ronnie Montrose, which is pretty interesting. Um, in fact, when I talked to Kurt Vanderhoof for Metal Church book, he was told me that they, um, played with Rail and Eugene with Ronnie Montrose in the lineup. And that, he was pretty geeked out about that. So, um, and then they kind of, a, a few years later, they reformed with Rick back in the band. They did this late late 90s it's some of these are really hard to read the dates i apologize i don't know it all by heart i swear i'm sorry i have to i have to look in the book that we did rusted metal or whatever i admit it I'm, but uh but yeah it's a little kind of it's more 60-ish kind of it's sort of a poppy a um, little less of the, it's still kind of interesting um let's see who else do we have that, um uh, Ray Gun. This is kind of a tough record to find. This is pretty cool, kind of guitar-driven metal. Um, uh, guitar shredder guy, Red Ray Gun. It's a little hype sticker up there, which is kind of cool. Um, and this had um, uh, Robert Waddell was in Phase with Brock Grau. Um, Scott Vogel played drums and a bunch of different things, including Reverend a little while later. Uh, Rich Hammer is um, Rich Dow Glory Tresner. Uh, who was also in uh, a couple of other bands we've mentioned before. Um, now, I didn't put Reverend in Rusted Metal because they were formed down in California. I was going to at least mention because Dave Wayne was in Reverend, so there's a couple of reissues of their, their two albums they did on um, uh, uh, Virgin uh, Records at the time. Um, uh, they had an EP on Caroline first, but... But they did actually, once they split up around 93, Dave Wayne moved home and reformed the band with Washington guys. And they did, um, uh, after uh, Metal Church reunited and did the Masterpiece album, he kind of went back and did his, did Reverend and finished a record they were working on. Um, at Todd Stotts on drums from Sire, from Gangland. Um, a couple of the guys from Faustus were in the band. They did a four-song EP. This is an expanded version of the um, that CD EP that came out in 2001. It's got a couple live tracks, a cover of UFOs Lights Out, and some pretty neat little David Wayne outtakes in the studio. Um, 
States. It's kind of a cool one. Um, uh, Red Platinum was a cool local band. Um, I guess that's upside down. Um, in the Seattle area, um, Jeff McCormick was in the band for a while. Kind of went through a couple different um, incarnation. Um, main guy um, was... Uh, Ooh. I can't, I can't, can't remember his name. Um, <laughs> um, it is Joe Supergiant. I knew it was something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, they're kind of cool band. Um, started out more of a, of kind of a sort of straightforward metal, kind of bare metal type of thing, more kind of the funk metal crossover type of stuff. Um, Rex and the Rockets was a Portland band. It was kind of cool. Um, played a lot of shows around. They had a cool cover of Strawberry Fields, the Beatles song. Um, I just actually picked this up. Last time I was in Seattle, did a little reissue of uh, Rejector 7-inch, which was kind of cool. A little 7-inch EP, a little sticker with it. And, insert that's kind of neat i'm not sure who put those out somebody in europe i think um let's see rhino humpers jeff rouse band um tacoma guys i believe i want to say if i remember right um that seems right um let's see what else do we got here uh rottweiler which, uh, of course, had, it's a little bit later, uh, 93, I think, uh, Paul, the singer, reformed this band with some other guys. Um, originally, they had a track on the Northwest Metal Fest compilation. Uh, they had uh, an album they recorded in 86 and eventually got released uh, on CD on Hellion Records in Germany, and they played... Um, uh, that metal festival over there that they put on, I can't remember if it was Bakken or Headbangers Open Air is the one they do, but um, we had a song from that on our latest Northwest Metalworks compilation. Got some reflection here, unfortunately, from the sun, but um, but yeah, Set the World on Fire. So our latest compilation we can get on our website, of course. Um, those guys were pretty cool. Um, See Roulette, we also had a song from. They had a four-song demo tape, which is kind of a hair metal thing, too. They are pretty cool, pretty polished, kind of in the dock and rat, um, you know, Cinderella, whatever sort of realm. Kind of a pretty cool band. Uh, so we had R.I.P., our, our man D. Viper. Uh, cool costume makeup band. Had incorporated some magic type of stuff for effects and things into their set. Um, they had an environmental angle to their music about saving the planet and trying to, you know, uh, trying to, for us to do better as people kind of thing it was kind of a cool concept. Um, kind of, sort of Alice Cooper y. It kind of had some of that punk rock edge of early Alice Cooper. Um, uh, some metal, but kind of fused with punk, sort of too. Uh, kind of an interesting band play with some different. Um, play with uh, El Duche the Mentors and Green Jello and uh, Rottweiler and a few different bands um, back in the day. Um, did some reunion shows a, a few years back. Unfortunately, uh, one of the members passed away a while back in a motorcycle wreck, and it unfortunately the band's kind of done now. It sounds like so. Um, let's see who else do we have. Uh, we had Ransom. It was a Portland metal band. It had a, a tape or two. And I'm trying to see if you can see them there down here in the bottom uh, over here. Um, they were pretty cool. Played around a lot of shows in Portland. Um, Rough Justice. Metal Meltdown 2. More recent years. Uh, was in that band. Um, Rawhead Rex. Portland and I-5 Tillers, kind of a thrash metal crossover type of thing. They were pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, I think that's it for props. So to mention a few other bands, Ridge we talked about with Fifth Angel. That was um, 
the earlier version kind of of that band um, doing more covers and stuff and kind of evolved into Fish at Fifth Angel later on. We had Realms that Paul Davidson was in a while, Brian Kelly, Scott Brady, um, uh, Scott Mercado that went on to be in Candlebox played drums. That's kind of cool. Rebel was Brock Grau from Lipstick and Phase was um, in that with Ken Kenny James from um, Slaughterhouse Five. That was a cool band. They had a tape and a CD. Um, Red Axe was a band played around a lot late seventies, early eighties. I'm kind of a hard rock band. Um, they um, had some originals, played a lot of covers. Uh, Kevin Dillon went on to be in Widow. Um, a few of those guys were kind of went around to different stuff. Steve Carlson, who's now singing for Fifth Angel, was in Red Axe. Uh, let's see, we had ri a couple different rages in Washington, Oregon. We had Rampage, um, Kendall Bechtel was in that band pretty early on doing some, um, battle the bands and whatnot. Um, who else do we have? Reactivate, thrash metal band, Tacoma area. Um, yeah, so a few cool ones trying to think about anybody else um and a couple older bands um uh rising tide was a 70s band in portland that james neal went uh who went on to be in malice was in they were kind of cool running around um roadkill a little thrash metal band in portland that was pretty cool ryan dyson um who else was in that? Greg Eisenbach was on guitar, vocals. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably about it. Oh, Rude Awakening, they were kind of cool. Um, thrash band up north there. So, so yeah, quite a few. Um, so, yeah, of course, as always, I'll say that there's a few more in Rusted Metal. So if you pick, if you don't have a copy, pick it up. Pretty cool reference guide, we, we think. And so far, Everybody else seems to think so, too, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so there you go. Last of Q and quite a lot of our bands. Um, you know, it, it, of course, if I don't mention your band and you had something and you want to send it to me, I'm happy to do a show later on where we show off some new stuff. I'm just mainly kind of sticking to, other than a few shout-outs, I'm trying to stick with um, with props that I have to show. Uh, or if Brian joins me, what he has kind of thing. Uh, we have quite a lot, so at least we have some stuff to kind of talk about different bands and who was in what. And So a lot of great stuff, as always. And um, you know, check us out, northwestmetalworksmusic.com. We're on Facebook and Instagram and all that. And, of course, you, a lot of you guys see us around at different events and stuff that we put on or record shows we take part in or whatever kind of thing. So, all right, we'll see you guys next week.